<sighs> All right, everybody. Um, I'm just going to try to make my way through this. Um, I'm not really planning on editing any of this. This is not going to be a monetized video. This is not a normal video, uh, but I did want to give everybody an update uh, on my health situation and um, a bit of a backstory as to what has happened to me over the past week and uh, how it ultimately ended up with me in the hospital, the pretty serious situation. And I just wanted to give you guys the story. Um, I also first want to say thank you to everybody who reached out to me on any forms of, uh, you know, social media or uh, sent me a message uh, just checking in and saying hi. And, um, you know, it really it really did mean a lot to me. There were some times where I was in the hospital by myself and uh, just sitting there uncomfortable and it was a comfort to you know get and have a couple messages with some people so i really appreciate that first off um second off uh well what happened to me so um basically i got really sick and it wound up uh with me getting in the hospital and thankfully uh i was discharged and now it's been almost 48 hours since I've been discharged and um, I'm feeling really good today. So I wanted to come and give this update and this story. Um, so that's really the short version. And what I'll do now, though, is I'll give you the longer version of what happened. And um, kind of this needs to go back to the 30th of January, which was a Monday. And, uh, yeah, I have two young children and I woke up Monday morning and I found out that one of my children had come down with a stomach bug and I was okay with the fact that I would stay home and take it easy with that child. And, uh, you know, that way they didn't have to go to school. And then as I did that though, I started to myself to feel really bad and I could almost feel this coming the night before, like the aches in my body. And I told my wife then that I was feeling worse throughout the day. I started to develop a fever and I got a pretty darn bad fever. And so I was resting all day. My child was upstairs resting. And so uh, I figured I had just somehow caught what they had. And that really wasn't the case, though. So anyway, uh, the next day, my child was feeling better. And then by Wednesday, they were ready to go to school. But I kept getting worse and worse and worse as Monday turned into Tuesday and Tuesday turned into Wednesday. And by Wednesday, I was having like 103 degree fever temperatures and uh, mostly body aches. And that was really all the symptoms that I had. So I was, you know, trying to rest and recover from this. The only thing I was taking uh, was Advil to try to help with the fever and the body ache pains. And as I was doing this, you know, I'll be honest, I was having some really horrific, like dreams and nightmares. And um, I would wake up drenched completely in sweat and I'd have to change all my clothes and my sheets and I would fall asleep again. And then two hours later, the exact same thing would happen. And that would happen about three or four times each night throughout the week. And so all this was getting to be about Thursday and I still realized I wasn't feeling much better and I started to get excruciating headaches and uh, so I would just lay there and my head would be in a lot of pain and then my body pains kind of intensified a little bit more. And so uh, Thursday, I thought maybe everything was calming down, though, because my fever started to go away a little bit. Excuse me, I need to take a drink. So again, as it's Thursday, 
and we're getting closer towards the end of the week, I thought maybe my condition was just changing and that I was having these headaches and body aches much stronger, but the fever was going down and my temperatures were going down. And, um, like the longer I would have a longer time between when I would actually be no fever and then actually get a fever and it would only go up to like 101 maybe. So I could tell that I was on the downside of this fever and, uh, I went through one more night of just, you know, a lot less sleeplessness, but I noticed I only sweated out maybe one time Thursday night. So Friday morning I woke up and I started to think maybe, you know, this was on the good side of things. I was feeling a little bit better. Um, but I also thought I should probably stop taking the Advil cause I had been taking it so much to try to help with all the symptoms that I had all week. So I just stopped taking that. And then Friday through the day, I was feeling really tired. I was trying to rest up. And uh, uh, I have, like I said, two kids and my wife, you know, God bless her. She works uh, 50 hours a week at a good job at a university here. And I, um, to be honest, when you're the dad, you know, you feel a little bit guilty. You're like, I've had to sit here now all week. And my wife said to pick up all this slack. And so, you know, when you're in a marriage and a partnership, you know, you totally the if, if everything's right, you're you're going to help each other and be there for each other. But I'm just saying naturally that that's just my personality where I would feel like I was guilty because I thought, man, I've been sick all week. I need to get out and help her and take some relief off her. So Friday, I thought I would cook dinner for the family and. Um, I tried to rest throughout the day. And as I started to cook dinner, I started to become extremely fatigued, like really tired. My headache got a little bit worse. And then I could feel some pain in my chest area. And this would have been about 8 PM my time on Friday. And so I basically cooked the dinner and I told my wife, I was like, look, I'm sorry, I can't do anything else with it, but I need to go lay down and try to rest. And uh, she was, you know, so supportive and helped me through all this. And she's helped me go lay down. But that Friday night, I wasn't able to sleep a single. I mean, I don't think I slept really at all, but I bet I still slept probably 45 minutes to an hour somehow. But the entire night was just uh, an awful nightmare of an experience for the most part. Um, my fatigue continued to increase. My chest pain started to get really intense. And throughout that night, I couldn't do anything to, to really change it. What happened is, is I would feel this intense pressure right from the center, from the area of my chest, really where my heart would be located and this pressure pain would not really subside any i tried to you know walk around i tried sitting up different positions and it wouldn't change anything and i just i just tried to lay there and do anything i could to try to close my eyes and not think about it and um somehow I made it through the night. Cause again, as I said, all I did was just lay there and do that, move around. I never could sleep. I drank some water and I would, I was constantly trying to drink a lot of water this whole week. Cause I, I wasn't able to eat much too. My appetite was really gone. So as I, um, got into this point where I just had this horrific night of just excruciating pain. I went up the next morning at about eight o'clock Saturday morning and I saw my wife and I just looked at her and I said to her, I said, I think, I think I'm going to die. And, uh, she just looked at me and she said, well, that's not, well, we're not going to just sit here and do that. We're going to go to the doctor. And I was like, yes, please let's go to the doctor right now. And so we hopped in the car and, um, we first tried to go 
to an emergency clinic because I thought maybe the chance was I just had a really bad case of the flu or COVID or respiratory virus or something. But um, the first clinic we went to was just straight closed. Now, it's not normally closed, but it was today. And the next place we went to uh, wouldn't take my health insurance. And so I said, you know, forget it. Let's just go straight to the emergency room which was ultimately where I should have gone in the first place. So we went over to the emergency room and I explained what had happened to me through the five days of the fever and that I was there because I couldn't uh, sleep and that I had this intense chest pain. And thank God that you know, the medical staff there, and I'm sure this is probably the way it is a lot of places in uh, hospitals maybe, but if you really do have chest pain, you know, they're going to get you in there quickly and, and start looking at you. So that's what happened. I got in there and they pretty much immediately took me in to a um, room in the ER for cardiac uh, patients. And that's where, you know, um, it was strange. I got into the room and my chest pain was still there and I was still feeling, still feeling really bad. And, you know, they got into the room and the nurses, they were wonderful. They got me set up and they put, wow, I don't know maybe a half a dozen electrodes on my body to start monitoring my heart rate, my chest um, breathing and things. And then they, uh, I had to give them, you know, some samples. They definitely did a lot of blood work and immediately were doing vital sign signals. I had a bunch of machines plugged up to me monitoring everything I was doing. They did an immediate EKG and uh, basically, uh, what they found was that in my blood work, my heart was definitely working hard, but in my blood work, they found an enzyme called troponin and it was very high. And, um, so they said that when that occurs, that it's a, an event of myocarditis, is from what I could understand. And that's what it says here on my discharge papers as to what I was treated for. So, um, thankfully I got in there and after they realized that they put me on medication, they sent and uh, stuck a couple shot or a shot in my abdomen area, right in my stomach. And it was a blood decoagulant, that thin my blood out so that I wouldn't have a stroke or that I wouldn't have a heart attack. It would thin my blood out. And so um, I realized that once that all had happened, that I wasn't going anywhere. Like there was still a na naive part of me that thought it was just going to be a small little thing that they were like, oh yeah, you know, you had COVID in it or the flu and, and you're, you just, you just need to go rest a little bit more. Everything will be okay. No, they, they did all those tests and they said, Hey, the flu test came back negative as well as your COVID tests. So you didn't have those things. You know, you just had a different small virus that wound up making its way into your heart and caused these enzymes to come out and you're going through this cardiac event. So anyway, they proceeded to do a procedure, um, you know, after they did the first dose of that, and then they did the first EKG and they did the first round of blood work and all those testing. They then took me where they were going to say they were going to give me a CAT scan for my chest, for my heart. And a tech came and got me, was wheeling me in there and they stopped him right when he got to the door and they said, no, we're doing a cardiograph on this one. And he said, okay. And so a different specialist came in with a special machine that was an ultrasound 
machine and he did an entire 3d video imagery uh, through sound waves of my heart and that was about a 45 minute process of them of me moving around slowly breathing and them you know ultrasound in my heart and that was the first time that the cardiologist came into the room and started to talk to me it was while he was doing this setting up to do this cardiograph he's like they want to come in we're going to let them watch a portion of this. I'm going to show them bits of your heart before I do the whole cardiograph of your heart. So the doctors came in, they started to watch all this. And uh, this is the point where you start to lay there and you feel nervous. You're watching their eyes and you're hoping they're not, you know, extremely scared looks on their faces or anything. And um, I was talking to the cardiologist, telling him what happened and he said, well, it looks like you may have been starting to have a heart attack or um, from this event, this myocarditis. He said, look, uh, I said, well, could I should I have done anything? And he said, look, you did the right thing by coming here and we'll take care of you. Um, and, uh, you know, we just need to, to relax and we'll see what these test results and this cardiograph and all these other things how this shakes out and finishes out. So I went through the cardiograph after the, do after that, those doctors, they left the, the cardiologists and the specialist did the whole cardiograph of my heart. And then I was told to just relax and wait. And so that's what I had to do. They hooked me up to an IV bag for fluids and, um, I sat there for probably three hours. I turned the lights out in the emergency room and I just tried to rest and relax and, you know, not get myself too stressed out. And, um, you know, I was really, uh, you know, hoping that again, somehow I'd get lucky and be able to get out of there that day. And so fast forward to when the doctors came and got me they they you know in this entire time they would come in and they would do tests again check my vitals the whole time um they did blood work again and then they said look you need to stay tonight and i said okay i already talked to my wife i said yeah i need to get myself well and i can't do that by going home really at least not tonight so the hospital moved me over to one of the main rooms um, in a different area of the hospital where you go, obviously, out of the ER. And it was my own. It was a nice room. And um, basically, I was just sit there for observation all night. And they were introducing me to more medicines. They were running more tests. And... Um, just monitoring my heart the entire the entire night so i spent the night there alone um you know my wife i i wanted her to go home with the kids and stay with them so i was there you know and um i tried to get some sleep because i hadn't gotten any from the night before and surprisingly i was able to get some rest and the nurses and doctors were incredible I can say that, man, they were so awesome. They really helped me. They kept me calm. They did a lot of things. I'm not good with having my blood drawn. I've honestly fainted from it a couple times. And uh, that had to happen a lot. I'm, um, I have a lot of pictures I took of myself that I'm not really ready, ready to look at um, that were of like the places that I had gotten medicine administered and uh, just like some a little bit of war wounds, I guess you'd call it. And this, I didn't want to like make a big deal about it or anything, but I wanted to, sh you know, show you kind of what it's like. And um, so maybe we'll go through that later when I'm ready to look at those photos. But it also makes me have extreme compassion for anybody who has to go through that and have, um, you know, those kind of things happen to them. Uh, more than just the 24 to 30. I mean, I think I was in the hospital for like 36 hours or something like that total. So um, I'm not really ready to look at those right now, but I will 
you know, think that would be a good thing sometime to go through and look at. Uh, so I know that this has turned into quite a long video. We're at 20 minutes. And so I will continue on with just like what's going on then. So I'm on, I'm into the second day at the hospital after a night of just full testing and um you know they're still concerned about this troponin levels in my blood where it keeps going up it's still going up and so as they kept telling me it was going up they would give me more and more medicines and then my blood pressure was jumping all over the place so they tried doing some blood pressure medicines and it, it, it was kind of having erratic results i think maybe not to uh I don't know, nothing too major or anything, but um, anyway, they were ordering more AKGs, and then the good news was, is in actuality, nothing was showing up on these newer tests other than this one troponin thing. Everything else was showing good. All my pain was gone in my chest and everything else. I felt honestly fantastic once they started. Um, I know I could tell my body was reacting well to the medicines and things that I was getting. So, um, I was concerned and I told my wife, I was concerned that I was going to have to stay there another day. Uh, a lot of the doctors that were not the cardiologists and, uh, they were talking to me about having to stay again another day to do some more treatments. And, um, so I was ready to stay another day, but thankfully the cardiologist came into the room. And this was the same cardiologist I had talked to earlier. And he said, well, um, how are you feeling? And I told him the truth. And I'd always told him the truth. that I, I felt great. I was like, I feel really good. Um, he said, well, I've gotten through your entire cardiograph that you had done. And I've been watching your progress through the medicines and he said to me, he said, um, everything is looking really great and I'm going to get you out of here today. And I was, I mean, I was so thankful to hear that. I almost cried. I, <laughs> I was just, uh, I mean, I was extremely, extremely appreciative of everything that everybody had done for me in the hospital and all the help I had gotten. But, um, I was really starting to feel, you know, like concerned too, if I had to stay there another night and, but I had, I had accepted that the possibility was there that I was going to, but I, so I was extremely happy when the doc, the cardiologist told me that. And he explained my event to me a little bit more in, in depth. Um, so I have no ham family history of heart disease. Thank goodness. I have no problems with my heart. I have a healthy diet. I'm not the most in shape guy, but I do. <laughs> I don't eat junk food anymore. And I, I've tried to um, maintain a lifestyle that is healthy for my body. And that's not saying anything that's like, I, I don't really exercise normally, which now I really want to. But anyway, since my heart was already in good condition, not having any problems, the doctor said my heart did really well through this whole event and was really strong, stayed strong, and thankfully there's no damage to my heart. And um, he also told me that I wasn't going to be any requirements for me to have to go and take any medicines or be on any kind of medical treatment or any dietary restrictions or anything like that. I just need to get some rest. And then I have a follow-up MRI that's going to be done on my heart soon. And um, that's the last thing that's scheduled for right now. So the good thing is, is that I'll be able to make a full recovery from this, from what he told me and that it won't be doing any permanent damage to me. And um, that it was just one of those strange, he said it was an extremely rare event where a simple virus got into my blood and into my heart. 
and cause the myocarditis event to happen. And um, that was really all there was to it. And that he said, because I straight asked him this, I said, was there anything I could have done differently to change this event or maybe make it not happen? And he said, there is absolutely nothing, nothing you could have done differently that would have changed any of this. He said, at what you did was you came in at the perfect time. You got the right treatment. Everything worked out great. And there's not anything for you to have to worry about long-term going forward. And so don't think of anything about like you could have done something different or you did something wrong because that wasn't the case at all. And so that was just an amazing piece of news. Um, and that's where I was at. I mean, it took him a few hours to run some more tests on me, get another round of things just to have more tests on the books on the way out. And after that, I was unhooked from all the medications and unplugged from everything. And I was able to leave. My wife was able to drive me home and since then, I've been home relaxing, trying to just catch my breath, get my bearings straight, relax, and um, really rest for a little bit. And that's where I am today. And, uh, you know, I apologize. It's a half an hour video now. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I do have health insurance. And however, in America, you never know whether that means something is going to be fully covered or you're going to have to pay something, but I'm not concerned about that. I'm not here to ask for any money or anything like that. I just thought this story might be helpful to anybody else because again, I'm not somebody who has any kind of history of heart conditions. I just had a severe event of chest pain and they said what I did was right to go into the emergency room. So I don't know what's going on, but if you have something like this happen and you have chest pain, go in and get it checked out because that's serious stuff. And that kind of leads me to believe that the health insurance is probably going to be covering uh, most of this without any questions. Um, you know, I do have a Patreon. If you want to go and help out with that, there's lower end tiers. I'd love to have you subscribe there. And uh, hopefully as the weeks go on, I'll be able to record some episodes of things that I've had creatively going for a while, but it's going to be a couple weeks before I get to really do any soldering or anything like that again. So um, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm here getting healthy. And again, thank you everybody for your support and your concerns. And um, it looks like everything's going to be okay for me. And um, I, there's a lot of people that reached out to me again. And I just want to say thank you. And I, I feel for you. I know there's some people that have gone through similar issues and especially friends I know, and um, I'll be rooting for you. And I just want to maybe do my part to bring awareness to this kind of stuff because I'm turning 40 this year. I've never had to go to the hospital for myself for anything uh, besides like a broken bone or a cut. And I was never admitted into the hospital overnight, never had anything really near death. So this was as close as I got. So anyway, folks, uh, I appreciate your time and your sympathy. And just remember that, you know, if you feel anything that doesn't feel right with yourself, um, go get it checked out with the doctors. Uh, I've, I was blown away with their level of service and how much they were there to really try to help me. And, um, Thank you again, everyone, and uh, I'll see you next time, and uh, we'll have a different update or something else. Have a great day.